Bob with Million Mile Garage. We've got a 2002 Nissan Maxima with a broken front engine motor mount. Let's show you what that looks like while it's running and in gear. Just so you can see the motor mount in action while we're doing this, I'm going to pull the air intake out first. I've already unbolted it. Putting it in drive. Brakes on, emergency brakes on. We're going to give it a little gas. And there's a lot of resonance in the car. Now watch when I put it in reverse. And the mount on the firewall side is in pretty good shape so you don't get a clump nice and smooth, no banging, no vibration. We're just going to undo the connectors on the fan shroud. Okay, we got those undone and then I just have a couple of spasters. Look like 10 millimeters. I think I just undo these top ones and then I, hopefully I can lift it out without having to disconnect the radiator hose. I'm just doing this to give me a little more room to move around to get this mount out. And it might also make it a little easier to take some pictures. All right, just taking out the lower plastic stuff, give me a little better access to the motor mount. And I also have to find the radiator drain. It looks like I'm gonna have to take the upper radiator hose off to get the fan assembly out, which will give me the clearance and the access I need to get the motor mount out. All right, second piece of plastic. Ah, there's the radiator drain. There she blows. A 30 year old pair of snap on soft jaws. Use this to gently remove the hose like that. So now that's out of the way. So I should be able to remove this fan without too much drama. I'm trying not to do this without breaking anything. I'm just gonna take a little tension off that motor mount. I'm just gonna lift it up on the oil pan just a little bit. It's not gonna take much. Oh boy, I'm gonna use the open end on this one. I'm just gonna come in with a little socket and release this tab so I can get this loose so I can get so I'm gonna have to break this one loose. So we're gonna slide this thing out. I'll bet it just comes right out.
catch them on a piece of rubber hose or something. This could give me a bad time. Trying to do this without punching a hole in the radiator. Okay. And I can't tell if I've got there's probably some stupid zip tie on here or something too. I'm gonna have to cut that off. I think that's what it is. Let's see where I'm attached. Okay, I got it loose. There was just a, a wiring harness that was stuck onto the, you know, had one of those little retainers. So there's the goofy wiring harness. I just used my socket tri trick. I put a little socket over that to release it. And there's the connector and it actually goes up here to this. That's where that goes. And I disconnected one down here that I probably shouldn't have. I'm just gonna reconnect it, not a huge deal. There we go. So there's the old one, and you can see it was really done. Look how tore it was. And here's a little a little cover that they put on it. You can see how tore it is right here. So this mount was completely gone. And you can look inside. These were probably, I think they had some kind of viscous fluid in them when they were new. And what the computer would do, depending on you know RPM, load, all that kind of stuff, um, it would vary the um, durometer of this uh, motor mount by running a little current to that viscous fluid, viscous fluid. But you can see this one just completely went away. I mean, it is completely torn away. So that's why every time I would get on the gas, it would bang. It would bottom out up here. You can look right here. You can see this whole thing is just torn away. It's just gone. Okay, we got our new one. This is Marmon Ride Control. This is another Rock Auto buy. It's a 7306EL. Made in China. And it says not use an impact wrench. So that's going to take some fun out of it. Let's take it out and see how it compares to the old. Alright. Just like that. Of course you'll have to poke the wiring harness through yourself. And they already have the hole pre-drilled right there. So we'll go ahead and just snap that in. Alright. Looks like to me, height, bolt pattern, it's all the same. True electric mount. Of course, it doesn't let this, uh, let this connector fit in too well. Oh, there we go. No, oh, it doesn't fit very good. Guess you gotta really push on it. Oh, there we go. All right. And it looks like they use the same connector same color same number of prongs the only thing I noticed is the color of the wires is different which I don't really think is that big of a deal um, the pinkish one is kind of matches the reddish one and then for blue they use green and then for the looks like the the yellow wire they used a black one assuming that the yellow is probably the ground so shouldn't have any problems there let's uh, let's put it in the car and see how it does Okay, there's the new mount in place. And in order to get this new mount back in, I had to jack the engine up on the transmission side right there. And that seemed where I got the best purchase to leverage this drivetrain back up so that I could get the bolt started in the isolator first. And what I did is I had this swung forward. I started this bolt first and then I came in with a block of wood and a hammer and drove it back towards the radiator. And then I used my pry bar and, and a punch to line up the holes. Basically I had to come in and do one of these deals to get it to line up. It went in a little hard. There's my, there's my wiring harness retainer right there and it's gonna go in a hole right here. It's really hard to see, but that's where my finger is. And we're gonna attach it there. I'll show you from the top when I do it. But the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in now and just finish tightening up these bolts by hand because the instructions said not to use an impact wrench, probably because they're afraid it'll damage the uh, electronics. 
on this electric motor mount. So I just got to get this isolator one tightened up and then I got to come in and just tighten up the two cross member bolts. I lowered the uh, engine onto the mount for the last few strokes. I don't really know if it makes any difference. I just want to make sure I had this mount tweaked in any way. And I'm just going to come in and just put this really tight. Ugh. That feels like about 45 foot pounds. It's probably about what they would tell you to do. More. These are pretty good fasteners. Let's say 45 or 50 foot pounds to get it. Oh yeah. Good and snug. Okay, the infamous little harness that I had to loosen. See how I can move it back and forth. I'm going to come in right here on the engine bracket side. And there's a little hole. I'm going to push it through right there. You see that? Right here. I'm going to push it through. Oh boy, that goes in hard. Assuming it'll go through that hole. It'll take Gorilla Force to do it. Oh yeah, good times. Just coming in, trying to get this aftermarket uh, clip to go in for the harness. I tell you what, it really goes in hard. I'm going to try to squeeze it in with a pair of pliers, but it just does not want to go. It's awful. It's an awful design. I just ended up zip tying the harness to that uh, hole on the uh, factory mounting bracket. I couldn't get the Marmon supplied uh, harness snap connector to hold in place. It's just garbage. So a zip tie works just as good. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach the uh, attach the harness. And uh, I did run into a little problem with the harness. It didn't want to fit right. And at the end of the video, I'll show you what I did to get it to fit. That was another thing that Marmon got wrong on this one. I don't have a lot of confidence in this mount, although it did seem to bolt up okay. All right. Let's see if we can get this to go in now. Yep, and it goes in hard. There we go. That's in all the way. Yeah, it bottomed. Yep. And we're just gonna take it and it Hopefully this will attach to the factory bracket right there. There's the hole. And there's the Marmon supplied one. They, do, they just seem to go on really hard. Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. It's too, it's too big for the hole. Oh, it's terrible. God, that one's just awful. Good grief. Crappy, crappy, crappy. You know, I hate to elongate the factory hole to accommodate this crappy one. See if I can at least get it to go in. Good grief. My God. Oh boy. Oh, it's gonna break, Jesus. Boy, there's another thing they got wrong. Boy, they picked the wrong size of those. Boy, is that lousy. Good grief. Terrible, terrible design. I'm just knocking a little bit of the plastic off the top. Hopefully that'll be enough to get the thing to go in. What a really crappy design. Lousy, lousy, lousy. Let's see if it'll go now. Oh my god. Wow. I mean, you talk about, geez, it's taking... Oh my god, it's been in the bracket.
China. <laughs> <laughs> yep, good old China made. Piece of crap. All right, let's see what we're doing now. There we go. Far out. Yeah, okay. It fits. Or can be made to fit. I guess that's one way to put it. All right, so that hopefully is pressed down in really good. All right, just a couple of my mini fans. <laughs> See if I can get this in without breaking it. Oh, I gotta take this radiator cap off. I had that problem last time. There we go. We'll just angle this thing down in a little bit. I'm already catching on something. Oh yeah, the radiator hose. We're gonna have to get this way over. Oh yeah, we'll go right in. Piece of cake. There we go. Got Mr. Fan back in. I have to take the uh, transmission cooling line and reattach it in this little bracket on the fan assembly. thing left to do is put the plastic on oh yeah I gotta grab the harnesses and bring those up for the fans and that's pretty well got it this should go right back in click and we got one here click and then I'm just gonna have to come in and replace these uh, zip ties that I cut to get the harness out before no big deal I'm just going to run, run and get some zip ties. Come in and pull this one down. There we go. That looks good. I just want to keep these out of the way so they're not flopping around. And I got one more here. We'll come in and grab this one right here. Might even just grab both of them. Yeah, I think that's what I did last time. All right. Grab those two right there. That's nice and neat and tidy. That's neat and tidy. That's not going anywhere. Okay. Reattaching the radiator hose. And what I like to be real careful about with these factory spring clamps, especially when it's been on a hose for a while, is we want to make sure that we have this hose clamp in the exact same position. Because if I don't, I'm going to get a leak. So I'm just going to come in and grab this. You got to pinch it really good. That's not enough tension. You think by now I'd own a pair of hose clamp pliers, but I don't. So you see how this is right here? I'm going to position this exactly like it was on before. Because if I don't, it will leak. There we go. That's exactly like it was. And there's an emblem on there that says Nissan. So that's a 2002 hose. So probably pushing my luck on that, but uh, good enough for now. So we got all this back together. Looks like I need new radiator mounts too. That's awful floppy. Probably from that broken motor mount having this thing dance around all the time. Got the Wally World Super Tech antifreeze and the reason I use it is because it's the cheapest. I'm hoping I put the plug back in the bottom. I guess we'll find out. That's full. Hey, I'm just putting the plastic back on. It's kind of semi-custom because I guess over the years, as the pieces fall off of it, um, I've got a, probably should have a washer on one of these. I don't know what I did with the washer. There's the one with the washer. Uh, this one over here, I use a 7 16 stainless and a washer. I hold it on right here. I put the 7 16 on the other side. I think, it, I think it had a plastic thingy or something that held it. I don't remember. It fell off. Garbage. 
I hate those plastic click fastener things. See what I'm hating even more is trying to get this nut to line up. There we go. The wind's blowing 40 miles an hour out here. We had a hurricane pass through southern Alabama. I guess we're still getting stuff from it. It's blowing grit up off the driveway into my eyes. Fun. Let's see. I'll just take our screwdriver. And then uh, I guess as those other click fasteners failed, um, I just took it. It's got uh, stainless steel Phillips head. I just thread them right into the urethane. The trick with re-threading into any plastic is I always turn the fastener backwards first and feel it ratchet down. Then I know it's lined up. Then you don't strip it out. Got one more here. Click. There we go. It goes right in. Just snuck those up. Plastic back on. Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. It does cover up the radiator drain. You gotta take this off every time you do it. God, I don't remember that. click down then you know they're lined up with the threads then I'm not cutting new threads in again where well, you can take these in and out about a hundred times before they strip out we should be long past uh, the lifespan of this car or at least when it's uh, somebody else's problem and not mine Always perfect timing too. It's, the neighbors always come out and mow the grass when I'm filming this stuff. Really adds to the ambience, doesn't it? Okay, got all of it. Yep. All you got left to do is make it kind of snug up. This one down here. Seven sixteenths. Grab the seven sixteenths wrench. Got one right here. Yep. Snug that up. We're going to leave the uh, air intake duct off until we uh, start it up and run it and all that, but basically it's 99% uh, back together. resonance is way down and now when I wing it up the engine mount doesn't bottom out and bang inside the compartment super smooth it's time for a road test share the stuff that goes wrong this connector on this uh, Marmon ride control uh, does not fit on the connector that's on the harness on the car there's a couple of little slots in here that were too narrow I think it was just probably a flaw when they molded it at the factory because 02 and 03 are the same motor mount so it's not like I got the wrong one um, so what I'm gonna do it's an old trick is I'm going to I'm going to heat this screwdriver up. I 
and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to open these ditches up a little bit. They're just a little too too narrow. You just come in and just, just tickle them open. It doesn't take much. I'll take the light and put it in here and show you what I'm doing. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll come in behind you. You can see what I had to do. I had to come in and open those up a little bit because they wouldn't clear the stock connector. So the, the channels were too narrow in there. They were just narrow just by a little bit. So I just went in and just opened them up with a, a heated up a screwdriver to do it. You could probably use a X-Acto knife or something else, but the screwdriver blade, the little Craftsman screwdriver blade was just the right width to do that. So um, that should fit on the car properly now. Mm -hmm. 